house with a mansion prepared for himself, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please join me in a meeting of responsibility by half verse, Psalm 89, verses 1 through 4, and verses 19 through 26. Your love, O Lord, forever will I sing. Praise to thee, to my heart, will proclaim your faithfulness. For I am persuaded that your love is established forever. You have set your faithfulness for me.
be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Frequently, as I fill the sermon, a song will worm its way into my consciousness and just stay there for the whole time I'm working on the sermon. Most times, it has something to do with the sermon, and frequently, it helps to lead me to where the sermon should go. There is a song today, more on that later. My father was 10 years old here in New Bern when the last great pandemic hit in 1918. And he remembered being in lockdown with no gatherings of any sort allowed. He would have understood our current frustration and sense of isolation. Perhaps he and we might not think of ourselves as blessed. But maybe, with a little reflection on today's scripture lesson, we might rethink that reaction. Was David blessed? Perhaps he didn't think so after being told by the prophet Nathan that, nope, you are not to be the one to build a house for the ark of God. I love the apparent sense of humor in our lesson from 2 Samuel, in which the prophet Nathan, who, after having initially rather perfectly told King David, sure, go build a house for the ark of God, had to go back to King David and say, oops, sorry, I was wrong. The Lord spoke to me and said lots of good things, but no house will. Maybe at that moment, not being able to meet up close in person might have seemed a blessing to Nathan. But Nathan did have good news too in what he got to tell King David. He said, in fact, the Lord will make you a house. That last statement is a deliberate pun by the author of 2 Samuel on the two meanings of the word house, both dwelling place and dynasty. And David's dynastic lineage is traced in the Gospels of both Matthew and Luke, right down to Jesus. But the real emphasis in our reading from 2 Samuel is to make the point that God doesn't reside in a place God resides in us. Place, even beautiful cathedrals, even our thin places, are not what is truly important. Our being willing to open ourselves to a real relationship with God, to build in each of our hearts a house for God, that is what is important. That is our path. Our gospel lesson from Luke is truly beautiful on many levels. It is the announcement that God is to come to us, to live among us, to be one of us, like us. God became fully human in the birth of the baby Jesus and participated fully in our very human joys and frustrations and sufferings, so that the very divine Jesus could, through his life and teachings, show us the mind and love of God. And by his sacrificial death and glorious resurrection, atone for our human sinfulness once and for all. And that, my friends, is the greatest announcement ever made. The angel said to Mary, Greetings, favored one, and added that she had found favor with 
God. Sounds like she was blessed indeed to be the mother of Jesus. And how was Mary blessed? I'd like to paraphrase the description I found of Mary's blessing. I quote, Nine months later, a very pregnant Mary had to endure a long, hard journey to a small town. Not because she wanted to go, but because the commands of the foreign rulers of her country made her go. It didn't look much like glory or blessing to have to go through the pain of childbirth on a winter's night in a stable amid the cattle and goats and donkeys, and to have to put her newborn son in a cattle feed trough. And shortly after the initial adoration, to keep her infant son from being murdered by officials, she and her small family had to flee to Egypt for several years, then return to obscurity and likely poverty in a small village in the Nazarene hills. She then had to watch her grown son go out into a life increasingly fraught with danger. Though loved by humble people, he was hated by those in power. And she thus had to watch him hang on a cross in front of jeering crowds. End quote. Some blessing. If Mary had expected unbroken happiness, she certainly did not get it. But the truth is deeper for Mary and for us. The world tends to think that God's favor equates to ease and pleasure and prosperity. These things can come from God, but they are not identical with blessing. An instance which occurred almost a decade ago while I was living in Boulder, but which I can still see in my mind, speaks to this. As I passed a gracious and enthusiastic Salvation Army elevator on my way into a grocery store in Morgan City, I determined to make a donation when I came out. But when I came out, I realized I only had a twenty dollar bill left in my wallet. Remembering a high school friend who had gone on to a career as an officer in the Salvation Army, I decided to go ahead and put the bill in the bucket. I must have been thinking aloud, because my donation led to a conversation with the bell ringer about how I and many others were blessed by my friend, who, among other things, taught me to play the tuba. The bell ringer then shared with me why she was such a wonderfully enthusiastic bell ringer. The Christmas before, she said, her teenage daughter had been a bell ringer with her. But during the summer, they discovered her daughter had brain cancer, which claimed her life in a very brief time. The Salvation Army was wonderful, she said. They helped cover the cost of her daughter's illness and covered all the costs of her funeral. She told them how blessed she was by the Salvation Army and what a blessing it was to be able to give a little something back by being a bell ringer again. What she probably didn't realize was that not only had she been blessed, indeed, she was a blessing. I have never regretted that $20 bill. Not all blessings are readily apparent or even easy to bear at the time. But that bell ringer at the grocery store was certainly a blessing to me. As was a lady I passed in another store here in town just a couple weeks ago, who, while fidgeting with her mask, apologized, saying she had severe asthma, which made it very scary for her to wear a mask. 
but she did so out of respect for those around her. Again, a blessing. Mary's deeply selfless and obedient response was a blessing to all humanity, even though it may not have been apparent to her at the time. And her baby, according to the messianic expectations of the time, was a questionable blessing with the wrong kind of king. He was never the kind of king that human pride and lust for power were looking for. Now the thought. There are a couple of evangelical Christian singers, two brothers called Nick and Rick, who eloquently describe the struggle Mary must have had to find the blessing of her life in the song, This is Such a Strange Way to Save the World. The song is told from the perspective of Joseph, who deserves at least a mention here in dealing with his own blessings. And part of the lyrics go as follows. Think of how it might have been if Jesus had come as he deserved. There would have been no Bethlehem with only shepherds at his birth. But Joseph knew the reason that love had had to reach so far. And as he held the Savior in his arms, he must have thought, why me? I'm just a simple man of trade. Why him with all the rulers in the world? Why here inside a stable filled with hay? Why her? She's just an ordinary girl. Now, I'm not one to second guess what angels have to say, but this is such a strange way to save the world. Even as we, in our at least semi-sequestered lives, struggling to find our blessings in the chaos and upheaval of our world, in the midst of a raging pandemic and political and economic crisis, even as we consider our life, let us hear Mary's truly obedient answer to the angel. Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. This is the prototype of how we should answer. Thank you, Mary, for showing us the way of obedience and being such a blessing to us. Thus says the Lord, Are you the one to build me a house to live in, or to be a house? Are we? As we approach yet again our perhaps this year unusual celebration of the birth of Jesus, our unexpected kind of Savior, are we the ones to respond like Mary and be a house? to open our hearts and minds to Christ, and by the way we live our faith, not only receive a blessing, but to be a blessing. Are we the ones? Why us? We're just one Episcopal parish. Why here, in just that old Two River town? Why? Why not? Amen.
are worthy of glory and praise. Glory to you forever and ever. At your command, all things came to be. The vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets and their forces, and this fragile earth, our island home. By your will, they were created and they have their being. From the primal elements, you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the rulers of creation, but we turned against you and betrayed your trust, and we turned against one another. Have mercy, Lord, for we are sinners in your sight. Again and again you called us to return. Through prophets and sages you revealed your righteous law. And in the fullness of time, you sent your only Son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law, to open for us the way of freedom and peace. By his blood, we reconcile us. By his wounds, we are healed. Therefore, we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope, to proclaim with them your glory, and they are unending him. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And so, Father, we who have been redeemed by him and made a new people by water and the Spirit now bring before you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, gave thanks, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering now his work of redemption and offering to you this sacrifice of thanksgiving, we celebrate his death and resurrection as we await the day of his coming. Lord God of our fathers and mothers, God of Abraham and Sarah, Isaac and Rebecca, Jacob, Leah, and Rachel, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world about us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength, for pardon only and not for renewal. Let the grace of this Holy Communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in his name. Risen Lord, be known to us in the breaking of the bread. Accept these prayers and praises, Father, through Jesus Christ, our great High Priest, to whom we view in the Holy Spirit, your Church gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you. And feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Body of Christ and bread of heaven. Body of Christ and bread of heaven. Body of Christ the bread of heaven. Body of Christ. 
Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. As Paul is distributing, I'll leave for those in a moment. In union, O Lord, with the faithful of every altar of our church, where the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated, I desire to offer you praise and thanksgiving. I present to you my soul and body with the earnest wish that I may also be united to you. And since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart. I unite myself to you and embrace you with all the affections of my soul. Let nothing ever separate you from me. May I live and die in your love. Amen. Thanks be to God. 